Have you ever wondered how electrical equipment is protected from high voltage surges? Well, let's dive into that. High voltage surges or transients can cause severe damage to electrical equipment. These surges, often a result of lightning strikes, can cause voltage rises over a thousand kilovolts on power lines. To prevent such damage, we use devices like surge arresters, lightning arresters, and lightning rods. Surge arresters participate inside the power line, absorbing surges and protecting the circuit. Lightning arresters, on the other hand, perform a similar function as surge arresters, but from outside the conductor. They are installed in the transmission tower to absorb electrical surges. Lightning rods are pre-protection devices installed on the highest point of a structure to capture lightning before it can fall onto the transmission line. They connect the lightning charges directly to the ground. Stick around and learn how these devices work to keep our power systems safe. Imagine the surge arrester as a guardian installed in the transmission line ready to protect the electrical equipment. This silent protector carries a heavy responsibility, warding off potential threats that could damage our power systems. But what exactly does a surge arrester do? Let's take a dive into its function and placement to understand its significant role. Surge arresters are specifically designed to protect electrical equipment from high voltage transients, like those caused by a lightning strike. Picture a sudden burst of 1000 kilovolts racing down the power line. Without a surge arrester, this excess energy could wreak havoc on our electrical equipment. So, our guardian steps in, absorbing these electrical surges and keeping the equipment safe. The placement of a surge arrester is strategic. It is installed in the transmission line near the equipment it is designed to protect. This could be at the point where the transmission tower line enters the substation or closer to specific equipment like a transformer. By positioning the surge arrester in these places, we ensure that it can effectively protect against both direct and indirect lightning strikes. Now, you might be wondering, how does a surge arrester do all this? The answer lies in the principle of a varistor, the heart of a surge arrester. A varistor is a voltage-dependent resistor, which means its resistance varies with the voltage applied across it. When a high-voltage transient occurs, the varistor's resistance drops dramatically, allowing it to absorb the excess energy and protect the power system. For small equipment, this is often referred to as a metal oxide varistor, or MOV. But the work of a surge arrester isn't a one-time affair. These devices are designed to operate multiple times, countering surge after surge, tirelessly ensuring the safety of our power systems. And while they might be costly, the protection they provide to our power systems is absolutely invaluable. So the surge arresters work tirelessly, ensuring the safety of our power systems. They stand as vigilant guardians, ready to absorb the high voltage transients that threaten our equipment and provide the crucial shield that keeps our power systems running smoothly. Now, let's shift our attention to the lightning arrester, the silent protector outside the conductor. Lightning arresters are the unsung heroes of our electrical systems. Their primary role? To quell high transient voltages and safeguard our power lines against the destructive forces of lightning strikes. Imagine a sudden electrostatic discharge between a cloud and the earth. This is lightning, a natural phenomenon that can elevate system voltages to dangerous levels if it hits transmission lines directly. That's where lightning arresters come in. These devices installed on transmission towers work tirelessly to suppress these high transient voltages. They act as a barrier between the power line conductor and the lightning strike, absorbing the brunt of the electrical surge. Unlike surge arresters, which are installed inside the power line, lightning arresters perform their duty from the outside of the conductor. But how exactly do they do this? Lightning arresters are attached either to the insulator or placed separately near the conductor, with their end terminal connected to the ground. In the event of a lightning strike on the conductor, they provide a path for the current to flow safely into the ground, thus protecting the power system from damage. 
And it's not just about protection. Lightning arresters also help maintain the isolation arc, effectively managing electrical surge currents from sparks and lightning strikes. These devices may not have any direct contact with the power line conductor, but their role in preserving the integrity of our power systems cannot be overstated. They are the first line of defense against the unpredictable and destructive power of lightning. And the best part, lightning arresters are a cost-effective solution. Compared to surge arresters, they are a much less expensive way to protect our electrical equipment from the damaging effects of high voltages. Just think of lightning arresters as the silent guardians of our electrical infrastructure tirelessly working to ensure that our power systems run smoothly even in the face of nature's most powerful electrical phenomena. Lightning arresters therefore play a crucial role in maintaining the integrity of our power systems. Now that we understand lightning arresters, let's move on to lightning rods. Lightning rods provide another layer of protection, specifically against direct lightning strikes. Now let's delve into the fascinating world of these simple yet effective devices. Lightning, a sudden electrostatic discharge between the cloud and earth, presents a significant threat to electrical systems. When it falls on transmission lines, it can elevate the system voltage to dangerous levels. To mitigate this, we use what we call lightning rods. Lightning rods are proactive safety devices installed at the highest point of a structure. This could be on the top floor of a building, the highest end of a transmission tower, or even the top of a chimney. Their primary role is to capture lightning charges before they can fall on the transmission line and cause damage. How do they do this, you might wonder. Well, these rods are made up of copper bus bars or conductors, which run from the top of the structure all the way to the bottom of the ground. The bottom end of the lightning conductor is connected to the earth, creating a path for the lightning current to flow. So, when a lightning strike occurs, it is attracted to the rod. The rod then captures these charges and safely directs them into the ground. This prevents the lightning from directly hitting and potentially damaging the electrical equipment or the structure itself. Moreover, lightning rods are quite cost-effective when compared to surge arresters. They are a simple yet effective solution to a complex problem. As you can see, the power of a lightning rod lies not only in its ability to protect against lightning strikes, but also in its simplicity and cost-effectiveness. Despite their simplicity, lightning rods must be divided at the top end to absorb the high lightning current. This ensures that the rod can handle the immense power of a lightning strike and continue to protect the structure it's installed on. And that's how lightning rods protect structures from the destructive power of lightning. Now that we understand how all three devices work, to sum it up, surge arresters offer indirect protection from lightning by being installed within the power line. Lightning arresters provide similar protection from outside the conductor, and lightning rods prevent direct lightning strikes by capturing the charges before they reach the power line. Each of these devices has unique placement requirements and cost implications, but all are indispensable in their role of protecting our electrical systems from the potentially devastating effects of high-voltage transients and lightning strikes. So, each of these devices has a unique role to play in protecting our electrical equipment. So, the next time you see a lightning rod or think about a power outage due to a lightning strike, remember the unsung heroes, the surge arresters, lightning arresters, and lightning rods. These are the devices that act as guardians of our power systems. Surge arresters work within the power line, protecting our electrical equipment from high voltage transients. Lightning arresters do the same job, but from outside the conductor, absorbing electrical surges in the transmission tower itself. And let's not forget about lightning rods. These simple yet effective devices capture lightning charges before they can cause damage to our transmission lines. They are the first line of defense, taking the hit so our power system doesn't have to. Despite their cost, 
these devices are invaluable in maintaining the reliability and longevity of our power systems. Remember, it's these devices that work silently behind the scenes to keep our power systems safe and running smoothly. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to share it with your fellow tech enthusiasts. Until next time, stay charged and stay safe.